We are glad that you're up with us here on 13 Sunrise. And uh, as we're going to get into our forecast in just a bit about this week, but just coming off the weekend. Oh my gosh. Beautiful so weather. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and you know, this heat is going to build and build and stay with us. I mean, it was hot all last week. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hot this week. Speaking of the Bears, they look just about as bad as the Colts did. <laughs> so hopefully the, the Colts can look better. And for that game, it's going to be 86 degrees. Ooh as we get you know wow. closer and closer to October. There. But right now we take a live look at uh, beautiful downtown Carmel. The course uh, Meet You at Maine was Saturday. They had a big crowd downtown in Carmel and everything's cleared out, but it's going to heat up there. Beautiful day those thus far with some clear skies outside. And a little bit later on today, we will warm up. Right now we're at about the coolest point of the day, 63 in Indy, but much cooler in other spots. Greenfield, you're at just 51, 56 in Carmel and 57 over in Martinsville and in Bloomington, 61 in Greencastle. Good morning, Kokomo. You're at 51 degrees this morning. So a somewhat fall-like start to what will be a definitely summer-like feel later on today. We're really going to heat up uh, 71 by 10 a.m. for the kids as they head out to school and 88 for a high later on today. Will we see some rain tomorrow? Most of us probably not, but there's a chance for a little bit in Indiana. That's because uh, there are tropical storm warnings along the Carolina coast due to this storm, which will be headed kind of, sort of, maybe toward us uh, later on tomorrow and we'll have much more on that in just a few minutes. But Lindsay, it looks like we've already got some issues this morning. We do. Yep. On the southeast side of town. So that's one to start. Right now we have emergency crews still arriving on scene due to a call for a vehicle fire. Now this is on the interstate 465 where this becomes westbound in between Arlington Avenue and Emerson Avenue. Two travel lanes currently blocked due to this. Looks like we just had a tow truck arrive on scene as well. So that it is creating some stop and go traffic back past its incident. This is actually the camera just north of there. So all of these travel lanes headed toward the issue. We have started to see some brake lights being tapped approaching that incident where we do have some lane closures due to the incident. So a little bit of a backup is starting to develop just past Arlington Avenue. You can see we are in the red along that stretch on the southeast side of town. And as far as the delay goes right now, that is starting to build across the southeast side of town. Our delay tracker shows us a 15 minute slowdown on 465 westbound in between I-74 and I-70. Again, mainly that issue on the southeast side of town, guys. All right, thank you, Lindsay. Our top story this morning, former President Trump is safe this morning after what the FBI is calling a second apparent assassination attempt. This happened yesterday on his golf course in West Palm Beach, Florida. As Alice Barr reports, one man is in custody after investigators recovered an assault style weapon at the scene. For the second time in nine weeks, the FBI is investigating what it's calling an apparent assassination attempt against former President Trump. The former president was not hurt in the incident near where he was golfing at his course in West Palm Beach, Florida. One man is in custody. Three senior law enforcement officials briefed on the matter tell NBC News that man is 58-year-old Ryan Wesley Ruth. This comes after authorities say a Secret Service agent spotted and fired at a suspect just outside the golf course fence line while the former president was golfing three to 500 yards away. What they do is they have an agent that jumps one hole ahead of time to where the president was at. And he was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engage that individual, at which time the individual took off. A witness reported seeing someone run out of the bushes and into a black Nissan and snapped a photo. Sheriff's deputies then tracked the license plate and quickly stopped this black Nissan, taking the suspect into custody. In the bushes where this guy was is a 8K47 style rifle with a scope, two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had a ceramic tile in them, and a GoPro. The incident raising new questions about securing the former president and Republican nominee. The Secret Service faced sharp criticism after former President Trump survived an attempted assassination at a Pennsylvania rally in July. The former president saying he is safe and well and will never surrender. Vice President Harris saying she had been briefed on the situation was glad he is safe and quote, violence has no place in America. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. 
In a statement, President Biden also said he is relieved former President Trump is unharmed. He said he has also directed his team to ensure the Secret Service has every resource to ensure the former president's safety. Well, right now, Metro police are investigating a deadly shooting on the northwest side of Indy. Police say this happened last night, and we know one person is dead. Matthew Foltz is live outside of IMPD Northwest District Headquarters this morning with the latest on this investigation. Good morning. Good morning to you both. We're still working to learn this morning just exactly what led up to this shooting. However, we do know police have two people in custody connected to this shooting. Now, Metro Police say this shooting happened at an apartment complex around 7 last night along Beverly Hills Drive near 79th and Georgetown Road. Police say once they got on scene, they found a person with gunshot wounds. They were pronounced dead at the scene. This individual was targeted for some reason. We do not believe there's any threat to the neighborhood because we currently have two subjects of interest in custody. Now, right now, police are asking community members that live in that neighborhood that if you heard or saw anything to please give them a call that will definitely help in their investigation. We are also expecting to learn the name of the person who was shot and killed from the Marion County Coroner's Office later this morning. Again, police are still asking for your help this morning. So any new updates that we get, we'll be sure to pass along to you both on air and online at WTHR.com. Ladies. Thank you, Matthew. In just a few hours, the Uber driver accused of shooting and killing a female passenger and leaving her body in a field expected to make his first appearance at the Community Justice Campus. Francisco Valadez is accused of murdering 30-year-old 30, 30 Shanti Dixon last week after picking her up from work. Dixon's body was found near Raymond Street and Sherman Drive in a wooded area there close to her home. According to court documents, Valadez admitting to shoot at Nick shooting Dixon after trying to have sex with her. Right now, Valadez faces a preliminary charge of murder. Well, new this morning, a 14 year old is under arrest for potential shooting threats made against two schools in the Lafayette School District. The threats were made against Jefferson High School and Tecumseh Middle School in Lafayette. Investigators received a tip about the threat Sunday night. That investigation led them to the 14 year old who they say now faces multiple preliminary charges of conspiracy. Lafayette PD believe there is no ongoing threat to either school. We are reaching out to the district for comment on their investigation. Well, Hispanic Heritage Month is now underway, so we're sharing stories of Hispanic culture right here in Indianapolis. And that includes the first public school in the state to integrate the Spanish and English language for students. Theodora Potter Elementary is one of multiple Spanish immersion schools through IPS. Students learn half their day in English and the other half in Spanish. And this is an elementary school, but students can also choose to go to this middle school. We're introducing you to one student who's been a part of this program since kindergarten, and she says that she enjoys helping her classmates. I just feel like helping people is the right thing to do, and if they like, sometimes like kindness, if you spread kindness, they come back to you. Our Marina Silva shares how this dual language program works and how successful it is coming up tonight on 13 News at 5.